welcome to News Tonight on Rajya Sabha TV, your daily roundup of all the major news and events from across the globe. I'm Tina Jha. First up, the top stories of the day. Ahead of Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit, Sri Lankan Premier Ranil Vikram Singh sparks controversy by justifying shooting of Indian fishermen. Single member Judicial Commission to investigate lynching of rapist in Dimapur, a salmon Nagaland put on high alert. Jammu leaders question PDP led government's decision to release political prisoners, stage protests over freeing Muslim League chief Masrat Alam. United Nations calls Islamic State's destruction of the Iraqi archaeological site Nimrud an assault on heritage and a war crime. And Saina Nehwal scripts history reaches finals of the All England Badminton Championship with straight game victory over Sun Yu of China. A top story tonight. Ahead of Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit to Colombo, Sri Lankan Prime Minister Ranil Vikram Singh stoked the controversy today, claiming that Indian fishermen can be shot if they intruded into the Sri Lankan waters. He alleged that Indian fishermen were taking away the livelihood of northern Lanka fishermen. Ahead of Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit to Sri Lanka next week, Indian and Sri Lankan delegations met in Colombo on Saturday to lay the groundwork. On the agenda for External Affairs Minister Sushma Soraj was the contentious issue of fishermen arrests. She was expected to raise the matter with her Sri Lankan counterpart Mangala Samaravira. The fishermen's issue gained prominence in the wake of controversial remarks made by Sri Lankan Prime Minister Ranil Vikram Singhe. In an interview to a Chennai-based Tamil television channel, Vikram Singhe denied any human rights violations by the Lankan Navy in its action against fishermen. He said, since Indian fishermen posed on their waters, the Lankan Navy was within its right to shoot them. The statement, um, uh, I think the foreign uh, foreign affairs minister will will discuss issues that have been raised in the interview by uh, Sri Lankan Prime Minister. Uh, it is a humanitarian issue, it is an emotive issue and it is an issue of livelihood. Uh, this is an ongoing dialogue between India and Sri Lanka. The External Affairs Minister will certainly take up this matter today as part of her discussions both with, the, uh, with her uh, Sri Lankan counterpart and with the Sri, Sri Lankan Prime Minister. The opposition sought a firm response from the government to what it called provocative remarks. Mr. Shushma Swaraj, our Foreign Minister is also at present there, so she should also raise this question. This is a very serious and very irresponsible statement. The change of government in Sri Lanka has not brought any change in its policy towards uh, Indian fishermen. What Sri Lankan government, the security forces of Sri Lanka, has been doing all along is uh, in complete violation of all accepted international conventions. On Friday, soon after her arrival, Sushma Swaraj met Lankan President Maitri Pala Sri Sena. She paid homage to Indian soldiers at the Indian Peacekeeping Force Memorial in Colombo. The IPKF had taken part in a peacekeeping operation in Sri Lanka between 1987 and 1990. It was constituted as part of the Indo-Sri Lankan Accord signed between the two nations in 1987 to end the Lankan Civil War. Prime Minister Modi is expected to offer Lanka a broad range of military and civilian assistance next week in an attempt to neutralize some of the influence that China gained by spending billions of dollars in the region. Modi is expected to tighten defense and security cooperation and push for final approval for a 500 megawatt power plant to be built by NTPC under a 2012 agreement in Trincomalee. Bureau report, Raj Sabha TV. And back home, Nagaland and Assam continue to be on high alert today as well, two days after a rape suspect was dragged out of the prison and lynched by a mob in Dimapur town. Three senior officials, including the SP and the central jail chief, were suspended after the incident. One person who was among the five injured in police firing on the mob also died today. Two days after a mob lynched an alleged rapist, the situation in Nagaland's Dimapur district is still tense. Prohibitory orders are in force in many places, while the state's commercial hub wears a deserted look. All major establishments, markets and schools were shut on Saturday as the administration set up a one-member pro-panel to look into the incident that took place on Thursday. 
curfew is on, and then the this uh, situation is under control of the police. The state government has uh, has already set up a judicial uh, this uh, commission, a judicial uh, this uh, inquiry headed by a retired uh, district and session judge. So this inquiry will establish all the facts. The Nagaland government has suspended three senior officials for failing to prevent the incident when a mob stormed the central jail. The angry crowd dragged out a rape accused and beat him to death on the streets of Dimapur town. The centre too has sought a report of the incident from the state government. Neighbouring Assam is on high alert and the state administration has been asked to step up vigil near the Nagaland border while the incident drew mixed reaction from leaders and activists. It represents the uh, frustration of people with the uh, entire uh, justice system. At another level, uh, it is extremely dangerous because if uh, people start taking to summary justice or street justice, uh, then the entire democratic edifice would break down. I say, koi bhi mob ek violence ke tahat justice ko apne hat mein nahi le sakte hai. Ye apati janak hai. और उम्मीद है कि वहां के राज्य सरकार इस पे पूरी पूरी तरह कार्रवाई करेगी और आगे ऐसा घटना ना हो उसके लिए पूरे इंतजाम करेगी द आर्मी वाज ऑन स्टैंड बाय इन बोथ नागालैंड एंड असम द नागालैंड गवर्नमेंट हैज आल्सो सॉट पैरामिलिट्री फोर्सेस टू रिस्टोर नॉर्मलसी इन द रीजन ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट राज्यसभा टीवी जम्मू एंड कश्मीर चीफ मिनिस्टर मुफ्ती मोहम्मद सईद इग्नोर्ड ऑपोजिशन फ्रॉम बीजेपी लीडर्स टुडे टू ऑर्डर द रिलीज ऑफ पॉलिटिकल प्रिजनर्स हु आर फेसिंग नो क्रिमिनल चार्जेस इन द स्टेट one of the persons released was masrat alam the chief of the muslim league and a senior hudet conference leader bjp leaders from jammu said the step can have disastrous consequences for the state jammu and kashmir police are all set to act on the state government's instructions to release political prisoners against whom no criminal charges have been registered it is very clear in the papers you have read it <laughs> there is nothing for me to add it's all there it's all open in the open it's in the news i don't have to uh, talk anything about it the any the direction coming from the government would be looked into would be worked out the directions came at a detailed review meeting held by newly elected chief minister mufti mohammad said who also directed the dgp to prepare a comprehensive plan to rehabilitate the released militants and separatists report said they include masrat alam and kasim faktu who allegedly took part in the stone pelting incidents in 2008 and 10 mufti sahab bar bar jo baat karte hain reconciliation ki baat karte hain या इनको जो हम कहते हैं कि जो कैदी है जिनके खिलाफ कोई क्रिमिनल चार्जेस नहीं है उनकी रिहाई की बात करते हैं दूसरी तीसरी जितने भी हम डायलॉग की बात करते हैं तो उसकी वजह यही है कि हम जम्मू कश्मीर के माहौल को बदलना चाहते हैं बीजेपी लीडर्स हैड मिक्स्ड रिएक्शंस टू इट्स कोलिशन पार्टनर्स डिसीजन वेल अदर्स कॉल द स्टेप एंड इंसल्ट टू दीपल ऑफ द स्टेट दोनों पार्टी स्टेट गवर्नमेंट भी और सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट भी इस पे एक सीरियस सोच विचार होगा और बातचीत होगी उसी के बाद फैसला होगा अभी कोई सोच विचार नहीं हो रहा है कि उनको रिहा किया जाएगा जवानों सिक्योरिटी फोर्सेस आर्मी और जम्मू कश्मीर के देश भक्त जनता के द्वारा दिए गए बलिदानों का ये अपमान होगा भारतीय जनता पार्टी किसी प्रकार के इस प्रकार के किसी भी मूव का विरोध करेगी जिन लोगों ने कसूर किया है उनको अदालत में पेश कीजिए उनके खिलाफ कदम चलाइए तो मुफ्ती साहब क्या करना चाहते हैं Barely a week since it took charge, the PDP-led coalition government has gone from one controversy to another, exposing the BJP to criticism even from its allies like the Shiv Sena. In an editorial, the Shiv Sena's official organ Samna asked the Narendra Modi government to condemn Said's statement giving credit for peaceful conduct of the assembly polls to separatists and Pakistan. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. And on a day, the Sri Lankan Prime Minister stoked controversy with his remarks on the Indian fishermen. Pakistan Maritime Authorities arrested at least 45 Indian fishermen for allegedly violating territorial waters in the Arabian Sea. The fishermen were handed over to the Karachi police, who said the arrested fishermen will be presented before the magistrate. Pakistan had set free 151 Indian fishermen last year when its Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif visited New Delhi to attend the oath-taking ceremony of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. And in other national news, the Bar Council of India issued show cause notices to two lawyers who made controversial statements in the banned BBC documentary India's Daughter. The lawyers' apex body took the decision after its executive committee meeting. Prime Minister found evidence of professional misconduct against the two lawyers. 
AP Singh and ML Sharma, the two lawyers defending the accused in the December 16 gang rape case. The two defence lawyers have been served show cause notices by the Bar Council of India for making derogatory remarks against women in the BBC documentary India's Daughter. The BCI sent notices on the ground that the statements appeared objectionable and constituted misconduct on the lawyer's part. Their licences to practice may be cancelled if BCI is not satisfied with their response. Yesterday night we held our meeting and uh, we have decided to issue notice to show cause to all th these two lawyers as to why disciplinary proceedings should not be initiated against them. Amal Sharma and AP Singh however defended themselves denying any misconduct on their part. We have not done any misconduct. Our professional misconduct is related to court related. Hota hai. हमारे क्लाइंट से रिलेटेड से हमारे लॉ से रिलेटेड है ना तो हमने कोर्ट को गाली दी है और ना ही कोर्ट की अपमाना की है हमारी सभ्यता संस्कृति इस बात जो भी हमारा स्टेटमेंट है वो सभ्यता संस्कृति से जुड़ा हुआ है अगर कोई निजी सवाल है तो उसमें निजी सवाल में निजी उत्तर मिलेगा और निजी उत्तर देने का हमें हक है हम निजी उत्तर पे देंगे उसको आपको सुनना पड़ेगा समझना पड़ेगा the government has banned the documentary, but the British public broadcaster went ahead with the telecast in the United Kingdom. The Editors Guild has condemned the ban and appealed to the government to revoke the ban. The documentary is also set to premiere in the US on 9th of March. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. And on the political front, the drift in the Aam Aadmi Party seems to have widened after leader Mayank Gandhi accused a small group of party decision makers of targeting him. This after he decried the decision to remove Prashant Bhushan and Yogendra Yadav from the party's political affairs committee. In a fresh blog today, Gandhi said that a concerted effort was being made on the social media to portray him as anti-party and anti-Arvind Kejriwal, adding that it would compel him to quit the party. Meanwhile, the party's Maharashtra unit leader Anjali Damania has sought disciplinary action against Mayank Gandhi. She has claimed that Prashant Bhushan wanted the party to lose the Delhi elections. मुझे जो लिखना था वो मैं ब्लॉग में लिख चुका हूँ आप उसको पढ़ लीजिए उसमें सारी बातें लिखी है मैं जो भी कर रहा हूँ पार्टी को स्ट्रेंथन करने के लिए कर रहा हूँ मुझे लग रहा है कि जिस प्रिंसिपल्स और सिद्धांत के साथ हम लोग इस पार्टी फॉर्म किए थे उस सिद्धांत को थोड़ा मजबूत करने की कोशिश कर रहा हूँ इसके सिवा या कोई मुझे पब्लिसिटी या कोई पार्टी तोड़ने की गतिविधि या पार्टी ऐसा कुछ भी नहीं है मेरे सामने उन्होंने कहा कि मैं सोचता हूँ कि आम आदमी पार्टी को दिल्ली के चुनाव हारना जरूरी है मेरे लिए बहुत 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 शॉकिंग था। I've been reading all this. I've been listening to the news from Rajasthan. I've been reading about Mayank Bhai's blogs. I don't want to comment on it. There is a party discipline about what is to be discussed in public and what is not to be discussed. And I would rather confine myself to the party discipline. On the weather front, after a sunny day post Holi, Delhi witnessed sudden rains this evening. The maximum temperature settled a notch below the season's average at 27.6 degrees Celsius. The Met Office forecast light rainfall or thunder showers in some parts of the city on Sunday as well. The maximum and minimum temperatures are likely to be around 27 and 15 degrees Celsius respectively. And for more national news and updates, let's take you nationwide. Kerala Assembly Speaker G. Kartikeyan passed away today morning at a private hospital in Bengaluru. Kartikeyan was undergoing treatment for liver cancer. He is survived by his wife and two sons. Samajwadi Party Supremo Mulayam Singh Yadav was hospitalized in Gurgaon for suspected swine flu. The party chief complained of breathlessness and uneasiness late on Friday. Doctors said he has symptoms of the H1N1 virus and his samples have been sent for tests. The budget session of Telangana Legislative Assembly started on a stormy note as opposition Congress and TDP members held protests at the governor's customary address. Opposition members alleged that the ruling TRS government was encouraging defections. Well, time for a very short break here, but coming up next, one year on since Malaysian Airlines flight MH370 disappeared. Families and friends of those look for closure. More on that after this very quick break. Welcome back, you're watching News Tonight.
Now, a United Nations body has called the destruction of the archaeological treasures in Iraq's Nimrud city not just cultural cleansing but also a great security concern that can possibly fund terrorism. Experts have lamented the loss of a valuable cultural legacy. Condemning the destruction of the ancient Assyrian city of Nimrud by Islamic State fighters, the United Nations Cultural Agency has called the assaults war crimes. We know that um, deliberate destruction of heritage has become part of the warfare of extremists in different parts of the world. We saw that in, uh, in Mali just uh, two years ago and uh, we see it now with the pillaging of Mosul Museum and uh, the uh, uh, Nimrud uh, archaeological site. Nimrud was home to some of the world's greatest archaeological and cultural treasures. The assault came just a week after Islamic State terrorists released a video showing museum statues and carvings being smashed in Mosul. The UN said the destruction of the site was part of a bigger scheme that could fund terrorism. I believe we have to put uh, the dots together. Uh, destruction of heritage, deliberate, uh, is not simply, as I said, a concern of, of culture or the cultural community or an expert. Um, it's uh, part of the security concern. It's part of a strategy for a uh, cultural cleansing, for erasing uh, memories. It's financing of terrorism. Many of Nimrud's most famous surviving monuments were removed years ago by archaeologists, including the colossal winged bulls, which are now in London's British Museum, and hundreds of precious stones and pieces of gold, which were moved to Baghdad. Important cultural centers of the ancient Near East, it's a city, uh, the archaeological evidence of which dates back to the third millennium, and then in the second millennium it becomes one of the cultural centers of the Assyrian Empire. And when I say cultural center, I mean there are lots of palaces, there are temples, um, there are also other pieces of evidence for a vibrant academic culture. The ruins of the ancient city that remain at the northern Iraqi site were excavated by a series of experts since the 19th century. British archaeologist Max Malouin and his wife, crime writer Agatha Christie, worked at Nimrud in the 1950s. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Come March 8, and it will be one year since the Malaysian Airlines flight MH370 took off from Kuala Lumpur and disappeared en route to Beijing. It's been one whole year of dealing with mixed emotions for the families and friends of those who were on board. But the sad part is, authorities are nowhere close to identifying the final resting place of the ill-fated aircraft that went missing a year ago. A candlelight vigil, grief-stricken faces and a prayer of hope. It is one day short of a year since Malaysian Airlines flight MH370 disappeared off the face of the earth, quite literally. The Boeing 777 carrying 239 people on board lost contact with air traffic control shortly after taking off from Kuala Lumpur early on March 8, 2014, as it was flying to Beijing. The disappearance happened as the plane flew across the Gulf of Thailand close to a navigational waypoint called Igari. Most of the passengers on the plane were from China. A year later, families of the passengers and crew members who went missing with the flight remained desperate for some answers. The wait has been agonizing to say the least. With every ping that was heard by search teams, hopes were raised and then subsequently dashed as it proved to be a false alarm every single time. Based on data, investigators plotted two vast arcs, one to the north and one to the south, across which MH370 may have flown. Combining all the data, it was concluded that the plane had turned south and flown for hours before crashing into the southern Indian Ocean. But all the data and the analyses have proved to be a dead end. I organized this uh, program tonight in order that um, Malaysians do not forget MH370. Uh, we owe it to the families of the crew and passengers not to forget. And uh, you have seen yourself just now the appeal from the 
relative of the Chinese passengers, we do not want to forget. More than two dozen countries have been involved in the air, sea and underwater search for the missing plane. The current phase is focused on the seafloor about 1,600 kilometers west of the Australian city of Perth. It is expected to end in May. Experts expect the plane's most likely resting place is in a rugged 60,000 square kilometer patch of seafloor, but no findings have confirmed this so far. Uh, Australia has has uh, air traffic management responsibilities for 11% of the globe. A lot of that is ocean. And so we have a particular interest in being able to track effectively and reliably the aircraft moving in our region. The Malaysian government is due to release an interim report on the investigation soon. Despite allegations of withholding information, it says its position is unchanged and it is still looking for the missing plane. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Indeed, a year on, many theories but no answer. Moving on in the bulletin, time now for all the other international news and updates in the Global Buzz. In Egypt, a policeman was killed and several others injured in a bomb blast. The attack came a day after President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi appointed a new interior minister who made a series of appointments to top security posts on Friday. CIA is all set to undertake major reforms, including setting up of an exclusive university for training spies. CIA Director John Brennan announced that it should be made easier to acquire new skills, to strengthen leadership abilities and to deepen distinctive trade crafts. He also added that CIA needs to invest in people by enhancing talent. Iraqi government forces launched an assault to recapture an area northeast of Al Garma district. The offensive is launched by forces of the 11th, 6th and 17th Infantry Divisions and Rapid Reaction Force troops. The ministry also released footage of airstrikes carried out by the Iraqi Air Force. Five people were killed in a machine gun grenade attack in a Mali nightclub. Al-Qaeda-linked militants were suspected to be behind the attacks. However, no group has claimed responsibility so far. Sources said two people were arrested in connection with the incident. Brazil's Supreme Court agreed to investigate politicians in connection with a multi-billion dollar kickback scheme at state-controlled oil company Petrobras. The scandal shook the Brazilian political establishment and undermined support for President Dilma Rousseff. Two other members of Rousseff's cabinet are also under investigation. We'll slip into another short break here, but coming up on the other side, Saina Nehwal enters the semi-final of the All England Championship. Details on that when the news tonight returns. Welcome back. You're watching News Tonight. And a resurge in Pakistan clinched a thrilling 29-round victory over South Africa in Pool B to put themselves on course for the quarterfinals of the World Cup. Pakistan were bowled out for 222 in 46.4 overs after two rain interruptions reduced the match to 47 overs a side. Skipper Mizbah ul Haq scored 56 while Sarfaraz Ahmed made a runner ball 49. Chasing a readjusted target of 232 runs, South Africa were well placed on 67 for the loss of one wicket. But Pakistan's left arm try of Wahab Riaz, Rahat Ali and Mohammad Irfan took three wickets each as they bowled out the Proteas for 202 runs. Skipper A.B. De Villiers made a brilliant 58 ball 77 but failed to stop Pakistan from registering their third successive win in the World Cup. Three for the over. Let's now take a look at what else is happening in the world of sports in the sports beat. Ace shuttler Saina Nehwal defeated China's unseeded Sun Yu to reach the final of the All England Badminton Championship. Trailing 3-7 in the first game, third-seeded Saina made a stunning comeback to beat U21-13 21-13. Saina will now play the winner of second semi-final match between Spaniard Carolina Marine and Taipei's Tai Zhu Ying in the women's singles title clash. Switzerland got their Davis Cup title defence off a dramatic start after splitting the opening singles tie with hosts Belgium. Henry Laksonen gave Swiss a 1-0 lead before Steve Darcis levelled in for Belgium with a straight set win over Michael Lammer. The Swiss are without the services of Roger Federer and Stan Wawrinka this weekend. 
Manchester United's defender Johnny Evans and Newcastle striker Pepe Sees were banned for six and seven matches respectively for a spitting incident. The incident took place in the Red Devils' 1-0 win over Newcastle on Wednesday. Well, that's all we have for you in this bulletin. Thanks for watching. We'll see you same time. Good night.